live here in the Philippines on behalf of the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, or PAMIL, and the Global Association, or the Global Alliance, rather, for Partnerships on Media and Information Literacy, or GAPMIL. I would like to bid everyone in the Philippines and those all over the world a pleasant and a safe afternoon. I am Mr. Rob Lim Jr., a PAMIL board member. Welcome to the second leg of PAMIL and GAPMIL's webinar series on Media and Information Literacy, where our discussion for today centers on Facts Matter, how to get away with infobesity during the infodemic. To formally start today's proceedings, let us all hear from the PAMIL National President and GAPMIL Regional Representative for Asia Pacific, Mr. Jose Ruben Q. Alagaran II, PhD, for his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Rob Lim of the Philippine Culture College. Last week, we had a very insightful discussion on how an organization in the Philippines responded or continued to respond to the call for media information literacy in Mindanao, Southern Philippines. Today, we have invited a speaker from another country but he is actually a Filipino librarian based in Kazakhstan. The idea is that uh, we would like to come up with some kind of comparative analysis uh, in terms of how MIL is being practiced in the Philippines and in Kazakhstan. We know very well that the work of librarians is equally important as that of the teachers. Without the librarians, we would not be able to get the needed information that uh, we want to be able to teach and also to be able to study our lessons. We actually face a challenge in this uh, particular period because we deal with a lot of information and it is the librarian who help us out in identifying and also um, uh, retrieving the right information that we need for our work in school. It will continue to be a challenge among librarians if they do not practice media and information that we see. Remember that the librarians deal with a lot of information, but if they are not careful enough, they will not be able to identify for us the right information. It is actually through media and information literacy that we are able to empower ourselves to choose the right information for proper decision making. And so for today, we would like to welcome on board another Filipino speaker, and uh, he will be properly introduced later on. I hope that you would continue to patronize the webinars being implemented by the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy and the Global Alliance for Partnerships on Media and Information Literacy, Asia Pacific Chapter. We have two more webinars to come, and we hope that you would um, be able to attend. The third one will be on MIL as practice in Bangladesh, and the fourth one hopefully will be on MIL uh, being implemented in New Zealand. So we hope to see you around for the next uh, two more weeks. So. Thank you very much and welcome to this second webinar of Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy. Thank you very much, Dr. Alagaran. Now proceeding to today's webinar lecture, Mr. Joseph Yap is a graduate of Master of Library and in Information Science from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. 
He is the Information Literacy Coordinator of the Nazarbayev University Library in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. His programs focus on the following, developing IL modules or information literacy, integrating IL activities in library programming, and raising MIL awareness in the local setting. He is a panel member and a supporter of GAPMIL. Friends all over the world, let us all welcome Mr. Joseph Yap. Thank you so much, Rob, for that introduction. Good afternoon from Kazakhstan. So let me just share with you my presentation. So I would like to say thank you to the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, as well as the Gap Mill for giving me an opportunity to present this afternoon. Let me just figure this out and there. So I hope you can see me now with my presentation. Um, there. So I'll be giving a presentation on how to evaluate media and information sources. Um, this one is a sharing, which I, I've also learned from the lessons um, that I've you know, learned throughout time. So um, I hope that this will be practically useful for everybody. So we often hear this phrase as a matter of fact, you know, as a matter of fact is used when we want to convince someone. Um, it is like um, we are confident that we are saying as a matter of fact, believe me, this is true and your convin convincing power would really matter. So in this unprecedented difficult time, um, we are experiencing a lot of challenges and the abundance of information produced and shared online is, is a challenge for everybody. Uh, as an academic librarian, as uh, previously mentioned in, in the introduction and by Sir Joey and Rob, um, it is a challenge to access online authoritative sources of information, especially during now that is um, infodemic or even on a, on a basically normal day. <clears throat> So searching for the right information itself is really hard to manage, uh, especially for those who are not well versed in looking for these right sources of information. So I do hope that after this presentation, we consider talking to our librarians or giving them a phone call because librarians also matter and they can give you the right source of information. Now, it also seems that when we are online, it's like, all kinds of sources are always in question now. So with a with a current with a current situation and focus on current events, um, it's like we really don't know. Every time we see information online in social media, we ask ourselves, are these the true information? Are they factual? So I hope we 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 are we agree on that one that what we see online is not necessarily true. So when we hear that this all kinds of news, it, it affects us, especially when it's threatening our, our own individual perception or opinion because we're living in a different condition now. So just to guide us throughout the whole presentation, um, as MIL practitioners, we are expected to be critical evaluators of media sources information. So my presentation would, will focus on how to strengthen our skills and attitudes on like identif on identifying and evaluating the legitimacy of the source before we act something about uh, before we do something about it. So we would like us ourselves to be role models for our students, to our peers, to our family members, in which sometimes we disagree to by acknowledging facts rather than propagate misleading information, and as well as find ways on how to control infobesity when we are already exposed to that one. Now, let's just define what infobesity is. So according to dictionary, it is an excess of information, especially when this um, makes more difficult or impossible to make rational decisions. So this, this, this uh, term or word is uh, coined by James Morris in 2004. So it's a combination, it's a, what they call portmanteau. It's a combination of information and obesity. So information is the data presented and then it's comprehensible form that has meaning to it. And then obesity, as we know, is a condition wherein it's like um, of being overweight and it becomes unhealthy to us. So in, in, the, in infobesity, there is a condition where individuals exhibit 
difficulty in understanding issues and they ineffectively make decisions uh, because they have too much information about that issue. Now, infodemic, as according to World Health Organization, is the rapid spread of information of all kinds, including rumors, gossip, and unreliable information. Now, this is just like pandemic, infodemic is like it's spreading instantly internationally. So you cannot control because of you know too much use of social media and communication technologies, it's easily spread out there. So there are different kinds of information disorders. So let's just discuss. There is misinformation, there is disinformation, and there's malinformation. So let's say, you know, these things can be avoidable, but of course, sometimes you cannot control anybody who wants to share information. Misinformation is when someone unintentionally um, spreads false or inaccurate information. Example, when someone just share with you a parody or satirical sites, you don't even check when was that information published, you know, a distorted headlines, some memes that when you get some photos online, you grab them, create a meme, and that person in the photo doesn't even know that he's the one in the, in the meme, and we, we laugh at them, some clickbaits, of course. Also, second, second one is disinformation. So it's the intentional one of disseminating false information. Let's say a manipulated story or a story that never happened, but you just want to share it with somebody else because you want to destroy some reputation. And lastly, it's malinformation. Uh, just a classic example, you know, when there's a recorded video that is only for private consumption, it's only between the two or three of you, but you use them to blackmail somebody else. So it's, it's a real, it's a factual information, but um, your intention is to harm somebody. Now, there are different issues or symptoms of infobesity, and we will tackle them one by one. So the first one here is information consumption. We consume, it's like there's an urge to consume information. It may be over consumption or under consumption. It's like when, when a student tries to study, but she cannot, he or she cannot focus because somebody else is watching some movies on her side and there is no focus at all. Information consumption is like sometimes information overload as well. It's like you don't know, you now have a lot of information and you don't know which ones to consider. You ended up being irrational sometimes. The second one, fear of missing out, was discussed by the former speaker last week. So fear of missing out is like you wanted to be a part of every group. You wanted to be in every group chat. Um, you wanted to be a member of or you wanted to subscribe to all RSS feeds or you want to be in every listserv because you want all that information. Third is tolerance level. So sometimes we admit that um, we, we, we don't want delays. When, when we send out information, uh, when, when we try to request for information to somebody else and they don't reply to us, you know, that word like zine sound, and then um, you keep on waiting until the end of the day and the next day, no, no replies at all. So these people would like to have information immediately. Um, information universe is like um, when people online, in the online world, they think and believe that everything online is real and true. Um, and then what happens, because you believe those information are true, because they cannot consider some critical evaluation, then they end up sharing all this information without even identifying other credible sources. Now, we proceed to information format is when there is a preference in ready to use information. Let's say when somebody asks you, can you prepare for me an infographics or can you provide me a report? So this person, when you submit this information, they don't even care to check raw data. So they just trust you. It's also good that they trust you, but sometimes there's a feeling like, oh, you can just give it and then they won't check if uh, something you manipulated some information in that, uh, in that report. Um, information mindset is when people tend to think and wish that all information has hyperlinks. It's like when you are in Wikipedia and everything there is like, um, because you are just so lazy to check, you know, there is a method called lateral reading, wherein you open dif different types of apps because you just want to make sure that what you're checking is true or correct or factual. Then we proceed with information analysis. But information analysis is when 
people exhibit a low level of analysis. Uh, so they tend to assume, uh, they jump up to conclusions easily without even trying to, to find out the real thing. And there's a condition called apophenia too, wherein they want to connect unrelated things. That's why they, they end up with um, conspiracy theories. Um, know it all attitude is when these people are so intoxicated where they don't bother um, the one that they have already is, let's say, if I go to Google, I would think that everything there is correct as well. So it's like uh, it's like related to the other term. If we go back, information universal, it's kind of related to that. So know it all attitude is when a lot of people sending me text messages now. So know it all attitude is like, uh, yeah, I, I discussed it already. Sorry. So next is attention span. Um, this is classic to now to millennials, wherein attention span is a low level of attention. Uh, just like what Dan mentioned a week ago, um, if we want our students to be more engaged, we have to make sure that we do something that would get their attention. Uh, even for me at my age, someone, sometimes because, you know, because we, we tend to have a lot of information now, sometimes we end up skimming just skimming in social media without e actually reading it because we already have this very low tolerance or low level of attention. And finally, because all of this information um, sums up all together, it affects our physical and psychological condition already. So we end up being, you know, um, infobies. We end up getting a lot of distractions. It causes us stress, it causes us fatigue. So sometimes we just want to shut down and just, you know, watch our own favorite series in Netflix. Now, how do we separate helpful from harmful information? So what we can do is that this one, SIFT, was developed by Mike Caulfield. So he described the four steps that we can use to evaluate sources of information, whether online or offline. Now, first is to stop. Stop first and check yourself and be objective. What happens is that if emotions get into ourselves, we don't provide rational decisions. And it happens every time when we are angry or we don't believe on some other, some people's opinion, right? So stop first and think. And next is to investigate the source. So first of all, as a background information, you can just always use Google, right? To find more information about the source. But, but ask yourself after checking all different kinds of sources, what are your basis? Is it based on research? Is it providing a strong opinion? Um, does it support a claim? Can you see the purpose? Does it provide reference links? Sometimes when I see people now online, they ask when somebody poses, um, posts um, um, a photo or something, they always ask, where did you get this? Where is the reference this? Because I want to know as well. After that, after investigating all kinds of sources, it is also better to, yeah, followed by find the original source. Where is the primary source for this? Because that source will confirm the facts. So it is very essential and helpful if we are getting more detailed information rather than just um, sharing right away, right? So, and finally, if you do all of these things, you would definitely know that what you're sharing is a trustworthy source. So to, to make sure it's a trustworthy source, find similar stories online check how many websites or how many organizations are sharing the same thing and you would know that it's a trustworthy source already okay now there are different ways to control infobesity but we should focus on facts only now based on the safe skills you've already identified that if it's a lie a rumor a conspiracy or a product of disinformation now, then the next thing to do is to investigate the source, who, the authority, who wrote this. Um, if possible, check professional background or reputation. Are they really knowledgeably qualified to talk about this topic or discipline? And then look at their level of expertise as well. Also, to make it credible, as mentioned a while ago, as you check primary sources, is it backed up by sources, by citations, references? And if there are mistakes, along the way they own it and and when they own it then they you can gain they can gain the, your respect again right so at some point in our lives it's like when someone's sharing something and we believe on that it's like 
oh, I'm fooled again. So, right? So we have to control ourselves and and know which information to believe and which information to disregard. Now, just some practical tips on how to verify profiles. First, do some background checking. So I'm making a, um, um, Dr. Alagaran as my example. So play the role of an investigator. So now it's not impossible to use pseudonyms. It's better if you are using your own name. Hiding in, a, some, in someone's personality is not good uh, at this point in time already if you want to get some clear and factual information. So search for profiles in multiple sources. So do not settle for one account. So my example here is that when I'm checking for Dr. Alagaran's profile, I looked for, of course, I used Google first, and then I found out that, yes, he's a member of International Steering Committee of YAPMIL. He is also a faculty at PUP, and he's also a regional head at the Philippine Information, um, Philippine Information Agency. So that's it. Next. Um, how to verify geolocation. So this is my photo. So if you can guess where am I, then you're correct, you're, you're okay. But of course, what if you cannot read this language or this alphabet, what can you do? So what you can do is to find this photo using Google Maps. So find a possible location. So you need someone to translate for you, right? So once you've found that person who can translate that to you, then the next step is to search for this one using the Romanized text. I'm just making it difficult. So go to Google Maps and the, and then the, the, at the top, the sign says something. So someone um, translated it for me. So it's Mustaki Lik Maidoni, but it's a train station. So it's Bikati. So you have to write everything down and, and spin there, right there, uh, Mustaki Lik Maidoni. And then on the left side, you can scroll and you can find other photos too. Just to match the photo, if it's real or not, then this is my original photo and this is another photo, although it's based on the other side of the road. So you can use um, your locations for Google Maps. Have you tried using reverse image searching if, if the image is being used by another person or another website or another company? Now, you can use tinai.com, so download this photo first. Once you downloaded the photo, and then you go to TinEye and upload the photo there, and you will see that there are two organizations using the same photo. Now, there are two results, right? So originally, it's from Philstar, but another one is publishing it from Business World. Now, from Business World, excuse me, you can see here that they uploaded the same photo, but they also cited Philstar. So, uh, probably they ask a permission from Philstar to use the same photo, but if not, then we have a problem about that. Now, you can also use, uh, if you're using Chrome, Google Chrome, you can actually use, um, if you right click, you can search Google for image and um, click that one and it will give you more results on what websites are using the same photo. So. Upon doing that, you will arrive in this destination and then just check out how many um, organizations or websites are using the same photo. So there. So this one, how to recognize fake photos is also difficult now. Um, so this one, this, uh, what can you see in this photo? So probably it's a little bit blurry, but this one you just need to use your judgment. If nobody says to you that this is fake, you will just believe in it. So this is the original one. And as you can see, th there's a space in, the, in between their heads and the hands are not really intertwined. So as you can see, for, for a normal person, or even for me, it wouldn't matter. I would just believe in it. But somebody, because uh, when I'm scrolling to Twitter and then somebody mentioned that, no, this is not the real photo, this is the real photo, because he's a fan of those two actors. Okay, now let's proceed here. So, so as a democratic society, we can all share what we want. We can express ourselves online, but Let's all be cautious, right? There's always freedom of information, and we have to be responsible for that. And because facts now are under attack, facts weigh differently when they are personally threatening. You know? So first, let's not share false content. 
So based on those um, info, infobesity issues and infobesity symptoms, if you are brave enough, enough, call out your friends or family members and tell them emphatically. Emphatically saying that, um, hey, mom, I'm worried that what you're sharing or I'm afraid that what you're sharing may not be true. Can you at least ask someone else or review your post first before sharing it with some family members? So do it that way, um, that you are scared if somebody bashes the post or something that doesn't believe in the source as well. Second is do not use misleading information as a weapon to misinform others. We often hear the word fake news, but you know, some fake information as what they call in previous, let's say two years ago, there was a news and it's real one, but something happened after two years and they're using the same information. That information is not really fake, but it's misleading somebody else because of the current situation. For example, if there's a typhoon saying that, oh, tomorrow we don't have a class, you know, sometimes the news and they use the same link, but if you check the dates, of course it's different. And so you have to be very careful. Uh, so if somebody shares, check the dates first. When was it published? Avoid emotional skepticism. All right. So it's like saying to myself, breathe first before sharing the information. Analyze and be critical. So because um, if some information makes you angry and emotional, as what I've mentioned a while ago, it will just arrive to a wrong decision or wrong conclusion. So avoid these things. Also, be mindful when sharing graphic images because not everybody in social media are adults. We have children too. So we have to avoid that one So because it may cause panic. And finally, do not engage in hate speech. So let's try to respect each other. We may have our own opinions, others may have, but always try to make something more constructive and be respectful. Right, and our main goal is to arrive at a common uh, decision that everybody, common for the common good of everybody. So here again, always check reliable sources and verify if the claim is true. And also support or build a fact-checking team. So if you, if you want to make your own, then it's okay. But if they're already available, then support them and report any misleading information, okay? So what libraries can do? So in my library, in our library at Nazarbe University, what we can do is just to update our clients, our patrons, not only our patrons, but whoever is accessing our library portal. So try to seek help from your librarians. They can help you a lot. So what we did is we prepared an updated announcement from our gov from the government of Kazakhstan and we provided links and we also only provided the facts right so here is the one also we created a lib guide a library guide on infodemic wherein we compiled all related information to the virus coronavirus covid-19 so we compiled them them and um, we added some videos as well that we think we think according to our evaluation is factual and true and can help others how to survive through the pandemic, infodemic. Also, once you've finished all of them, then use your social media accounts, share them so that others it can gain more views or more people can access to this information because of course not everybody will just go to the library portal. So use your social media accounts. And also we, we publish it or we posted it in our Instagram account as well. Now, there are various sources which I compiled. So have you even checked Fact Check PH? It's only available via Facebook. You can check it later. First Draft, First Draft is like a fact checking website group. Um, there's a free online course on fighting fake news for those Filipinos viewing now you can check La Concepcion College course it's taglish so there's a Facebook link that I gave there also visit Gapmill so as you know we are the arm or UNESCO arm on you know helping out and finding ways how not to 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 fall for uh, misleading information 
Then also this one is a very good um, course in you, which you can watch in YouTube, uh, Navigating Digital Information. I'll show a um, screenshot later on. Also, you can just, because PolitiFact and Pointer may be from the West, but they also have some information on, on Philippines. So you can check it out later and also from around the globe. And finally, if you want to have or another course, there's an information literacy course by UNESCO and Athabasca University. All links are provided. These are hyperlinks. It's like you know, uh, going back to the previous symptoms of infodemic where everybody would just like click on all kinds of hyperlinks. Now, this is the Navigating G Digital Information on YouTube. They have 10 episodes there. It will be, it's really helpful even for me. So I watch some of the episodes on like ev evaluating evidence and checking online sources. So you can check it out later at your own convenience. So the main, the main um, channel is called Crash Course. Under Crash Course, you can find um, Navigating Digital Information. So these are my references. I hope it's just fine for, so that you can have more time for questions and answers. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din. Thank you very much to Mr. for that very wonderful and informative lecture.